I think there is no doubt that everybody here, everybody you know, is looking to be happy. Everyone wants to be happy. Everyone wants to be joyful. It's kind of the reason behind so many people wanting to go on holidays in Spain or down to the Côte d'Azur or they want to have that bigger car because it'll make them that bit happier. They want to have a slightly bigger house, slightly more comfortable, whatever it may be, an easy chair. They want to have a McDonald's next door, whatever it may be, anything. All of these things, fundamentally, I think, uh, our, our desire is, is that we be happy. You know, that's why we look for so much entertainment. Uh, over the summers, weekends, Saturday nights, we look for entertainment because entertainment should make us happy. Uh, we, we look for the next thrill, the next exciting thing, clothes, whatever it may be. Uh, even online now with, uh, with our smartphones and computers and all that, there's an endless, absolutely endless source of entertainment, if you wish. Um, you can watch, you know, if you missed a match over the weekend, you can watch it the following day or a week later, or you can go back to matches from 1972 and watch them again, if you wish. You can watch as much entertainment as you wish, it's all there. <coughs> so fundamentally, our, 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 our goal is to be happy, right, to experience joy. The issue is that very often, in order to be happy, in order to attain happiness, or in order to be joyful, we will sin. Right? In order to, 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 to find this happiness, or what we think is happiness, we go against what God wants. All right? It's a very simple, very simple little, little dynamic. Right? So God has created us and given us a world which is beautiful and full of natural resources and full of beauty and, 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 and seasons and sun and snow and everything. It's just amazing, amazing planet, absolutely phenomenal. And he entrusts it to us. And he gives us freedom. And he gives us an intellect that we can work things out and come up with solutions for all sorts of problems and organized society and medical solutions and political solutions and geopolitical solutions, all the whole lot. Like we, we can do so much like with our, with our intelligence. And he gives us a will that we then with this will can choose if we want to, to do the good because our intelligence doesn't always have to work for good. Our intelligence can work for entirely selfish motives. So we're given all these resources, like the planet itself, our own... Uh, intellect and will and our own faculties and abilities. We're given all of this. And then he says, like, you know, he entrusts the world to us. Go forward, multiply. I entrust all of this to you. I trust you. I trust you. So he gives us this freedom. And with this freedom, we should choose our ultimate good, which, of course, is him. Because our ultimate good is what's going to last forever, which is God, which is heaven, which is eternal life. That's our ultimate good. Choosing anything else, I mean, we can use things in the short term, but choosing anything else as the goal of our life is plain, nonsensical, and ridiculous. Right? What was that name of that? Perfect Strangers. Remember that? Don't be ridiculous. Remember that? Okay. Old show. You would not. Uh, so that's, that's, that's kind of, it's, it's ridiculous to choose anything except God for all eternity. Okay? So this is the, the dynamic that we find ourselves in, just to get, give it, get, to get a bit of context. Okay. So... Within this, we're looking for, for, for joy. But joy will not be found by simply doing, the next, simply fulfilling the next urge I have, simply satisfying the next desire I have, will not make me happy. It won't. It will not. Is that clear? Okay. That's what the enemy, you see, will have us think. So God gives us this freedom, gives us this beautiful planet, this the kind of cosmic... Uh, plan for our lives, you know, living here on earth and then choosing God for, for, forever in heaven. We have the insect and the will in order to do so. Great. It's all good. But the enemy will say, no, no, no. The way you'll actually attain happiness isn't by kind of focusing on God and these greater things. It's by focusing on yourself. Focus on you. Do what you need. Do what you want. And then you will be happy. And it doesn't matter about anything else or anybody else. Do what you need and what you want. Okay. And what that leads to, of course, is misery. Right? So it's, it's, it's such a strange but true dynamic. Like that we keep choosing ourselves. If you keep choosing yourself, what happens? You become selfish. And are selfish people happy? Well, no. Because much wants more. So are spoiled kids happy? No. Because, <laughs> you know, once you've got a big PlayStation, then you want a 
Oh, what a, yeah, PlayStation, see the thing. Yeah, PlayStation. And then you want, you know, you've got a big screen. Then you want super big screen. Then you want three screens with a comfy chair and optically controlled room mouse thing. You know, uh, you know, it never stops. Like, no matter what, how much you have, you want more. Okay, spoiled kids aren't happy. Selfish people aren't happy. Okay, so putting ourselves at the center does not work, but this is the just, it's like, it's this universal plan of Satan to <laughs> convince us that putting ourselves at the beginning will make us, putting ourselves at the center will make us happy, but it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't. So we just need to kind of break out of that mentality and say, whoa, hold on a second, like, if I keep doing, if I just keep satisfying my next desire and impulse, this, uh, as I've called it before, like living in this kind of Saturday night mentality, Fulfill whatever passions you have. It, does this make me happy? It doesn't. So stop. So stop. Stop doing it then. Okay? So what is then? What is the authentic root to joy? Joy is spelled J-O-Y. I went to school. And uh, J-O-Y, right? J-O-Y. Spelled J-O-Y, J. Jesus. O, others. Y, Yourself, okay? Yourself's in the third place. Jesus first, others than yourself. So putting Jesus first. Putting Jesus first, it's, it's going to be the root to happiness. And what's interesting, about, like, what's interesting about putting Jesus first is at times the Lord will call us and inspire us to do exactly what we want to do. Do you know, it's like you've, you've, you've prayed about marrying a person and you really want to marry them. And God is like, yeah, that, that's, that's great. I'm all for that. A holy marriage, wonderful. Go for it. But we shouldn't always think that God's will is always going to be misery, misfortune, and death. Of course not. Again, typical plan of the enemy. Don't ask God what he wants because you'll get cancer. You know. It's, no. God, God wants healthy, holy families too, you know. It's not that everyone who prays to him becomes a mystic victim soul. No. Genie. He wants holy families. So, like, let's, again, let's avoid these kind of ideas. So, you ask God what he wants, and it may be exactly, exactly what you want. Because God wants to satisfy the deepest desires of your heart. The deepest desires. Not, not the kind of just the passions, the superficial ones. The deepest desires of your heart. One could argue that actually he put them there. So these deepest desires of your heart. The deepest, like the most important, most fundamental, good, wholesome ideas and desires in your heart. He put them there and gives you the ability to realize them. Okay, so putting Jesus first works. But it may cost you, on occasion, your will. Uh-huh. But so will marriage, so will religious life, so even will maybe even single life. I mean, you still have to pay your taxes, kind of whether you want to or not, you end up in prison. So no matter what you do, we always have to learn how to renounce our will in some way, shape, or form, definitely in marriage and definitely in religious life. We, you have to learn to renounce your will, otherwise you will, just, you will never be happy. Again, the enemy will say the opposite. Fulfill your will, whatever your will is, just do it, just fulfill that next desire and you, then you'll be happy. But it's not, it's miserable. And then others, again, in family life, you see this all the time, community life similarly, uh, where we learn to put others' needs before our own. You know, your child needs a change, a nappy, uh, feeding, uh, you can't sleep for the 15th time that same night. And, you know, it's, then it climbs into the bed, you're just crawling all over your face. Yeah, uh, I've got to go to work tomorrow, get off my head. <laughs> like, just, <laughs> And you just want to sleep. You just want to sleep. But uh, then that kid wakes up with the other three, and then they all come into the room like, Daddy, we can't sleep. I guess I can't find my socks. You don't need your socks. <laughs> <laughs> it's two o'clock in the morning. You're not, you're not getting up now. This is bedtime. Just go to bed, the lot of you. Uh, yeah, I can't find my room. <laughs> it's, it's down the corridor. It hasn't moved. <laughs> Please go to bed. <laughs> I have the greatest admiration for parents. It must be absolute torture. I, like, I do like my sleep. It must be absolute torture to have your sleep interrupted night after night after night. My goodness. Okay, fair play. Well done to the parents. Um, so renouncing your will, though. Right? Putting others before your own. Others' desires and wills and needs before yours. And then finally, I mean, you have legitimate needs and wants, and they're, they're, they're good too, but in their place. In their place, not in the centre, not in the not in the, not in pole position, but what you need, sure, absolutely, in education or you need to go to the doctor, you need whatever, you need, sure, by all means, but we don't we don't put ourselves first. If we do, what we find is that 
as life goes on, this is again, it's, it's, this is the opposite to what the contemporary mentality will teach us. If we keep putting ourselves first, we become more and more bound, tied up, right? So it actually does the opposite to what we think it'll do. We think it'll make us freer, but it doesn't. It doesn't. So you, you imagine, like, if we don't put God in the first place, if I put myself in the first place, and my career, um, money, okay, then I'm going to have to be working, and working harder, and working more, and working longer hours. Then there's a possibility of a, a promotion, but it's also another guy or girl or whoever it is in the office who will be eligible for the same position, so I have to work harder, longer, more overtime. The kids don't see me. They'll be okay. I'm doing this for them. Not really. Um, but you know, we're going to work hard, we're going to get this thing, and you're working hard, and you become more and more bound and tied up, right? And then if you don't get it, you're miserable. And if you get it, now you have to prove that you are worthy of it. And this is only a simple thing like a job. It doesn't even look like a sin on the outside. You know, but it, it, we become swallowed by our, our career, which is for me. I can argue it's for my family, but it's not really, though. It's not like you were poor beforehand. And it's not like your family needed a ton more money. They needed maybe to have you beside them more than more money. And that's, as I say, like, that's a simple thing. It doesn't even look like a sin from the outside. Then there are more, maybe slightly more, more sinister things where addiction starts to creep in and where I'm absolutely convinced that I, I, I must have my next hit. I must have this drink. I must have, I, must, I need my phone. I need to check and see if people have liked the, the images I've uploaded recently to see, am, am I still liked? Am I still popular? Do people still care? And more and more, I'm getting addicted and addicted and just focus on this, this one thing. And without really realizing it, everything starts to revolve around fulfilling this desire, fulfilling this need. And all things just st start really not, not to matter at all. They start to fall way down the pecking order. And all I want is this, this hit, this drink, this, this, this fulfillment of, of, of this desire. That's all that matters. Nothing else matters. And I'm bound. And I'm binding myself. Or then the, the, the addiction of how we see ourselves. So every time I, I, I look in the mirror, I'm just looking at myself and just, oh, I wish I was taller, blonder, fatter, thinner, stronger, slimmer, whatever it was. And you're just you're staring at yourself disgusted and become absolutely obsessed with this thought, I must look another way. I need to be different. I need to starve myself because I'm absolutely disgusting as I am or I need to spend all of my time and money in the gym to, to, to bulk up because I'm too thin. And in, all, in doing all of this, I'm binding myself. And wh wh when the Lord talks today in our gospel about Lazarus, yes, the, the idea of, of, of raising the dead is very important, but what really struck me today reading it isn't so much raising people from the dead, but freeing people from the death of the soul. And where Jesus, like he just declares with such authority, I just, it's, it's just so beautiful. He just says, Lazarus, here, come out, unbind him. And let him go free. Unbind him. He was swallowed. We, we're using this symbolically, if you will. But if we can imagine a person who's lived a life seeking joy, but in all the wrong places, right? So not with Jesus first, then others, then themselves, but with themselves in the center, right? And it leads to this, this a life that little by little steers you away from God. I even read stories, unfortunately, recently of, uh, of ladies who were just delighted with this abortion, and not, not in Ireland, it was, it was elsewhere. Uh, and they were just so, so happy with it, because what it allowed them to do was to, to live this party life. And then when they would get pregnant, they would stay pregnant for a while, because the extra hormones in the body makes the skin look softer, and then you have an abortion, because you look younger. And then living that kind of a lifestyle. So, so little by little, this desire to, to look young and, and be whatever, attractive and all this rubbish, uh, starts to lead them in, into a, a life of, of deep sin. A life of death. A life of death. And as our lives get, get steered away from God, we're getting steered away from life. We're getting steered away from hope. We're getting steered away from grace. But where does that lead us? It leads to death. It leads to death. And we end up in a tomb. And what happens in a tomb, you start to rot. And a big, dirty rock is put in front of it to hide your stink, to hide your smell. 
And the Lord says, take that obstacle away. Root, get rid of that. Get rid of that rock. So what is that rock in your life? What is it like? What is that, that obstacle in your heart to God's grace? <laughs> Chances are it's you. Chances are it's you. Like, is there anybody in your life you haven't forgiven? Is there anybody in your life who you're holding on to this, to this unforgiveness, to this anger, this hatred, this resentment towards someone? And is this great big obstacle in your heart to love and to grace? Because you don't want to let go of that. Then it, what does it lead to? It leads to spiritual death. This, this, your, your, heart, your soul in, in, this, in this tomb of darkness, you don't even see the light around you. And maybe you don't even want God's grace to forgive them because you don't want to forgive them. So even God can't help you. I don't want your help. They don't deserve my forgiveness. Or the way I see myself, the way I see others, the way I see those around me, everything, everything. Everything is affected by whether the Lord is in the first place or not. And everything can be broken down and destroyed by putting myself, my own will, in the first place. And it leads to death. And so the Lord says, like, he just commands with such authority in your life and my life today. Unbind him. Let him go free. So for any of you today who are bound maybe in your relationship with God, maybe you find it difficult to understand God, maybe you find it difficult to forgive him. Maybe something has happened in your life, maybe someone passed away, Maybe someone in your family was diagnosed with uh, some terminal in illness and, and it's difficult for you to understand why God would allow that. With great trust and hope, we listen to the words of Jesus, asking him to set us free from that. As he says to us, unbind him and let him go free. As we think of our lives and our careers and we may be bound in this, this desire to be more, to be more maybe in the eyes of our own family, the eyes of our brothers, sisters, maybe in more, more successful than us. Maybe in the eyes of our parents who are trying to impress without really realizing that, 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 that that's the reason. Maybe just in our own eyes, I just want to be number one. If that's binding me in, in my life, well then we realize those words of Christ in our lives. Unbind him and let him go free. If I'm self-absorbed, self-obsessed with my looks, my vanity, wanting to look a certain way, willing to put in all sorts of time and effort and money into that at the cost of spending quality time with my family, with the Lord, with friends, serving. If that has bound me, then we listen to those words and give them authority in our lives. Unbind him. Let him go free. If I'm bound by fear, if I'm afraid, afraid to move from where I am in case things get worse, afraid to even move into healing in case I, I won't know who I am if I'm healed, if I'm better, if, if I'm not the, the sick one, I just I wouldn't actually know how, what to think? I'm, I'm so used to being obsessed by my, my health or my sickness or my illness. How would I even be healthy? So we command in Jesus' name that, that, that we let go of that attachment to our sickness, our illness, whatever it may be. And we allow Jesus' words to take authority in our lives. Unbind them and let them go free. Or for anybody who might be affected by addiction to alcohol, to drugs, painkillers, to self-harm, addicted to impurity, or addicted to anything on the internet that isn't helpful to their soul. Lord Jesus, we, we offer you all of these things and we allow you to take, take authority in our lives as you command Unbind him and let him go free. Lord Jesus, we wish to be happy. We wish to be joyful. And so, Lord, we allow you to take away these rocks from our tombs, to call us out into the light, 
to unbind us and to set us free. In your name, amen.